It's all happening, ladies and gentlemen. It's all happening. Yet another Chelsea news blitz just for you guys. Reese James, imminent return. I mean, this is great news. We've got news about Tina and Jureen. Southampton on a madness. Once another one of our academy players. Pulisic contract situation. We'll talk a little bit about that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you guys do all the talking. I'm not going to say too much. Um, Timo Werner. Jorginho, Delict, we've got it all covered today, ladies and gentlemen. All right, all right, all right. Here we go, back again on the other side of the coin. All right, all right, here we go, back again on the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get straight into this. Got a lot of news to go through, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, during the winter break, Reese James is continuing to work on his fitness at Chelsea Cobham training base after beginning to, uh, to do individual drills last week via the Athletic. Reese James is on course to return to Chelsea's first team squad next month, with it being a great possibility that he is named in the squad for the FIFA Club World Cup. This is this is juicy news, ladies and gentlemen. I love this. This is fantastic. I mean, I didn't expect his return to be so quick um literally what now by the by the time club world cup starts probably be about what maybe five six weeks that he's been gone this international break has been timely for this situation to recover i expected maybe it'll be by the end of march but for him to be ready by club world cup that's great to be in the squad i still don't want chelsea to rush him in. I, I, I need to make sure that he's not rushed in because if he triggers that injury again, we can't have him gone for another five, six weeks when everything sort of resumes again mid-February in terms of Premier League football, Champions League football and so on and so forth. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is great news. This, I suppose, gives me the vibe that we're probably not going to do anything in this transfer window. Um, I think the board sees that Thomas Tuchel might have found some sort of a solution in the left side, whether it be left wing back, left back with Malang Sa. And I'm okay with it for the time being. I know a lot of people will say, Miz, how come we weren't in for Goosens? I, I don't know. Ask our scouts. Our scouts just having a laugh, to be honest. And I'd rather us not make any silly moves um, and throw money again. We've got quite a lot of deadwood that we still need to get out of this particular club. I don't need to include more sort of average players. So I want the scouts to do their due diligence over the next few months and then find someone for the summer transfer window if, if need be, which we do, depending on how Chilwell turns out to be. So I'm really excited about the Reese James situation. Don't be surprised if we don't make any transfers during this uh, you know january transfer window but then again you never know osman dembele there could be some news around there all right let's have a look at the next situation ladies and gentlemen pys exclusive from nizar kinsella armando broja likely to wait until the end of the season to see if thomas tuchel will give him a chance at chelsea west ham and a number of other clubs are interested in the chelsea striker southampton one anjurin permanently Yet another player, Angerine as well, Southampton interests. The Southampton, they're on a madness. Thomas uh, Hassan Haru, he's gone around talking about a youngster, especially Armando Broja, on a daily basis now. He is zeroing in on the Chelsea Academy, knowing there are superb talents in this academy, and he can put, perhaps make something out of it. And, and you know what the funny thing is, ladies and gentlemen? Essentially, Southampton probably sees this as a, this as a business opportunity. They will most likely, well, they've already got Tino Livermento from us and they've got a buyback for 40 million. So if Chelsea ever want to get Tino back from Southampton, we would have to give him give them 40 million. That's after Southampton only pay, paying about five or six million for Tino Livermento. So they sense a business opportunity with our players, which we kind of don't tend to see. I mean, we, we do. Selling academy players is part of our business model. It's always been, well, in the recent times, it's been part of Chelsea's business model to raise money by selling um, youth players, you know, the likes of Mark Gihi, Tina Livermento, um, so on and so forth, Tarek Lamptey. So I've, I'm not going to be surprised. I'm going to be hurt because Chelsea, once again, failing to plan properly. For me, Armando Broja is a, a future prospect. If anything, the future is next season for me to be part of the squad and be part of the playing unit. But 
you know, Chelsea have put themselves in a bit of a muddy situation with the Lukaku um, scenario that has happened. And, you know, our only hope now is that Lukaku balls out and he bangs in goals and he does well and hopefully honours the contract. If not, we're going to have to sell him for a very, very discounted price, which Chelsea barely tend to do. But Chelsea, this is the one thing about Marina. She never wants to make a loss on any player. And ultimately, that player, you know, the likes of Ross Barkley or Danny Drinkwater or Baba Rahman, Bakayoko, all of these players, they get loaned out. And I don't know if we've really made money out of it when really we should have cut our losses a long time ago. Maybe we would have rectified the situation a little bit. You know, for example, Mishibachuai, there was apparently a 40 million um, euros or pounds, whatever the case is, offer from Dortmund a couple of seasons back. But we opted that, you know, Mich Michi Bachuai is worth more, more than that. But look where Bachuai is now. So, look, I'm not going to be surprised if Chelsea hierarchy ends up selling Amanda Broha for, let's say, you know, 25, 30, 35, Newcastle coming with 40 million, and then them having a buyback clause. And, and that buyback clause is probably going to be about... 70 80 million or something like that and essentially other clubs are making business with our players tina and Jorin, i'm pretty sure will have the same impact once again another player that i'm very very excited about a great youth prospect yeah gives me that ruben loftus cheek vibe hopefully he doesn't have the same sort of injury um uh, injury sort of conditions that ruben loftus cheek has had so Look, uh, yeah, as I said, he's robust, Andrew, um, very good on the ball, pacey. And he's another player that could look juicy for Southampton to snap up for a small amount of fee and maybe have a buyback clause. So look out for these sort of scenarios, ladies and gentlemen. It's it's quite mad at the moment what's, what's happening with our academy players. And uh, I'd like to see what our plans are moving forward. Next up. Southampton attempting to complete the permanent signing of Tina Angerine from Chelsea before the end of January transfer window. There you go. We talked about Tina Angerine. Southampton on a madness at the moment. In current... Okay, here we go. Now, Pulisic. I, I'm not going to... Every time I tend to talk about Pulisic, you got, there, there are... Majority understands where I'm coming from. There is a minority group that has... They think that I have an agenda or hate... I don't hate him. I... I absolutely think Christian Pulisic has the talent. I don't think he's fulfilling his talent. And then you're going to say, well, he hasn't been playing his position. And I want to ask you guys, I'm not going to make too much comments about this today. I want to ask you guys, why hasn't he been playing in his position? Why isn't Thomas Tuchel playing him more in his preferred position? Why? You tell me. Why wouldn't Thomas Tuchel prefer him? Why does he prefer other players over Christian Pulisic? And then in recent times, you guys have been saying, well, he doesn't get enough game time. Well, he has got game time. Yes, it's not in his position. So I want to ask you guys the question. Would you rather him benched than not get any minutes at all? Or do you rather him at least get some minutes and not be benched? I mean, a few times he played as a striker. Would you rather have seen Sun Bell? Because there wasn't any other opportunity, like other players available with Lukaku injured. Kai Havertz was unavailable through testing positive. Tim Averno was injured as well. Would you have rather seen Sun Bell as opposed to Christian Pulisic? We can't have both, you know, both the cakes and, and eat it ourselves as well. So I want to ask you guys the question. Why hasn't Thomas Tuchel started him enough in his preferred position? And would you have preferred him in the bench as opposed to playing out of position? I want to ask you those questions. In current circumstances, it's unlikely that Pulisic will get a new contract. He has two years at the end of the season. Chelsea value him highly as an asset and on and off the pitch. And history su suggests Marina will be reluctant to sell less than $58 million. Look, we're in a conundrum again. Pulisic at the end of the season will have two more seasons left. He's completed three seasons by the end of this season with Chelsea Football Club. He would have completed three seasons. So we're in a situation, I, I want to ask you once again, I'm not going to make any comments about Pulisic because I tend to get cop insults. Would you give him a contract extension? What do you do? There's only two years left. Either you give him an extension so you can secure the player or you have to let him go because you want to make sure you get some sort of money back from your investment. 58 million. Who is buying him for 58 million? Who? Has he done anything to prove he is 58 million worth? 
And don't tell me it's just the post-lockdown under Frank Lampard, the project restart. That's now been a couple of seasons. So I'm going to leave it to you. I don't want to make any more comments. I, as I said, I like the player. He's talented. I don't think he's fulfilled his talent, much like many of our other players as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it to that. But you let me know. You let me know about Christian Pulisic. It's understood that Werner would like to play in a two-striker formation. Tuchel experimented with a 4-2-2-2, but Werner failed to deliver against Spurs. Tuchel greatly values Havertz's qualities, his intelligent movement, pressing and on and off the ball work. I've got a feeling Thomas Tuchel doesn't really fancy Timo Werner. And look, technically, Timo lacks massively. He may work hard. He's a humble person, you know, never talks down in, in media. But at the end of the day, we need someone a lot more ruthless. And even with Timo wanting a two-striker scenario up front, it's not like he's balling out. Once again, you can say, well, he doesn't get enough chances. Well, he doesn't get enough chances because he doesn't take his chances with both his hands. Do you know what I mean? Like, he lacks a lot of qualities that we need at Chelsea Football Club. So I'm not going to be surprised if he goes. And if, if anything, for his own benefit, for Timo's benefit, he probably needs to go. Havertz, on the other hand, I believe Thomas Tuchel really, really likes this player. When we talk about multi-dimensional, multi-faceted, that is a multi-dimensional player. Yes, he hasn't clicked yet, but I feel like this is one you can back. He has the technical ability. He has his physical ability was getting better this season. Yes, his shooting needs to get a lot better. There's a lot of room for improvement, no doubt. But there's a lot of things you can like about him that you can sort of see that it's worth waiting for as opposed to some of the other players. Do you know what I mean? So for me, I've got no issues if, if um, Thomas Tuchel really likes Havertz and, and is patient with him because he could be an important cog for us down the track. But even him, it will be his third season next season, albeit young still, but he will still need to start delivering as well, no doubt about that. Simon Phillips uh, Calcio Merc Mercato report that Chelsea will try to sign Matthias de Ligt, but La Repubblica claim Thomas Tuchel's side will need a fee of at least 18 million euros to make him away, uh, take him away from Juventus. Look, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I think he's a top defender, but for me, 80 million euros. He ain't a Thiago Silva region. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's not... Sergio Ramos. He's not one of those classics to pay 80 million. We're not talking about cheap money anymore. We have to be very smart about how we spend money from now on. I know Roman has he's got all the money, but we as a football club can't just be throwing funds around like that. It hurts. You look at Romelu Lukaku, 100 million you know, pounds almost. It hurts that level of investment when it goes south. You know, people want to talk about Declan Rice for 100 million. That Declan Rice is a fantastic player, but 100 million is a lot of money, man. That kind of investment could backfire big time. And we need to be very careful about how we spend our money. We can find those gems. This is where the scouts need to do their job. If the scouts are scouting Delict, you're not doing your job. No one needs to know about Delict. Everyone knows about Delict. You need to tell me who's who's up and comer Delict, an up and comer you know, the next big thing. We need to get on that. And then on top of that, we've, hopefully we can keep Rudiger. Thiago Silva's already signed the contract extension. Hopefully we get Kunde. Kunde at about, what, 55, 60 million. That's a decent amount of money for that type of a defender who is very versatile on the right back, right wing back maybe, can play, you know, center of CB, has the technical ability. A lot of people say he's, he's, he's more of a midfield type of a defender. He's got the midfield qualities. That's the type of you know, footballers that I want. He's a French international, plays as a right back over there. I, I'm not convinced utterly with De Ligt, to be honest. I think he's a fantastic defender, but for that type of money, I'm not convinced. Levi Colwell, another academy player who could possibly get sold, to be honest. That's the way our board our, operates. Business model is to make money out of these you know, youth youth products who are very juicy prospects for other clubs, um, except us, which is crazy. 
Simon Phillips again, Barcelona have asked the players' representative Musa Sissoko to talk to the clubs interested in Dembele so that they try to buy him now at a small price. Um, Santiago Val. Osman Dembele wants to continue at Barca, but for the first time he accepts that leaving in this market is a possibility. Look, ladies and gentlemen, if there is a slight chance of some sort of movement happening in this window, whether it be in the deadline day, this may be it. But however, someone would need to be loaned out. You surely cannot have all the attackers that we have right now and then also add Dembele on top of that. Even if we switch to a 4-1-4-1 where we use more attackers, there's still too many attackers. So it might be an outside chance, but if this happens, then someone needs to get loaned out immediately. And it may, and if it happens in deadline day, it could be mad. Dembele coming in, someone going out. But once again, I've got my reservation for this particular player in terms of the injury concerns that he brings. And he's not a particular player that's been balling out either. His production level is not that great. Talented player. But I'm now sitting in the situation where I'll back Thomas Tuchel. If that's what he wants, I'll back him. I'll back him. Last but not least, Juventus have already made some approach with representatives of Chelsea midfielder Jorginho via Gazeta. Look, whether it's true or not, that's a different story. Whether any of these news are true or not, that's a different story. But for me, ladies and gentlemen, we do need to think about transitioning away from Jorginho in the future. I love him for what he's done, especially under Thomas Tuchel and also obviously under Sarri against under Frank Lampard. It was difficult, but one few things that I want to mention. He's the kind of role model that I wish our youngsters would look up to. And not just the youngsters, even some senior players like Lukaku. Jorginho has gone through all sorts of adversities in Chelsea Football Club, all sorts of abuse, all sorts of insults. But I can barely remember him ever saying anything negative in social media. I, I don't even think he's done any sort of interviews with any of the you know, Chelsea correspondents, never talked down on the Chelsea football. Did he not have things to talk down on? He had plenty of material to talk down on, but he never did. Yeah, you can say his agent has been talking about him leaving, but that's his agent. He can't control his agent. But him and Rudiger as well, all the adversities they've seen, they've never come out and talked negatively about the Chelsea Football Club when they really had plenty of material. This is why it gets me annoyed when I see now players talking about, you know, the athletic article, uh, brutal, Thomas Tuchel's brutal with his criticism. Thomas Tuchel doesn't treat us right. Or, you know, Christian Pulisic saying it's tough. I, I know, I'll, I'll take my words back in recent times about Pulisic you know, being very upfront and honest about what he said in recent times in the last time. But is it necessary? Is it necessary? That's what I'm saying. Like, use players like Jorginho Rudy as your role model. Do you need to say all of these things? Is there a need? Is there a need? Talk to... By sending out that message to the fans, I don't know what... your Some parts of the fan base will think will have a perception and other parts will have a different perception. It only creates more division. The less you say is better in these sort of scenarios. And I think this is where you know, players like Jorginho and Rudiger, they thrive. But going back to the Jorginho situation, I do think we need to start transitioning out. I thank him for all the services, you know, all the awards he's won. He's been a fantastic you know, player. I do need a different profile of a DM next season if we are to play you know, more of an attacking style of football. Attacking in the, more attacking personnel uh, if we play with a lone DM. I want someone a little bit more athletic. I want someone who's got similar attributes as Jorginho, but more athletic. Jorginho can still be part of the Chelsea setup as a rotational player. I think that will suit him. He plays too many matches for us, I feel. He gets tired and then his performances go a bit weird. And I think this will be this will be a good thing for Jorginho as well. And it's not like, how old is he? I'm pretty sure Jorginho's Jorginho age. Pretty sure. They're 30 as well. 30, Jorginho. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what your thoughts are for all this um, Chelsea news that we've gone through. It's a Chelsea news blitz. We covered a lot of ground. Would love to hear each and every one of you guys, your thoughts on um, you know, Brozier, Tine Angerin, Pulisic, Timo Werner, Delict, 
Jorginho. Please comment below if you've enjoyed this video. Smash the like button if you're here for the first time. Subscribe, hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, see ya.